What's up guys, Yale Greenfield, AKA The Live King. I'm in a new location, Denver, Colorado. Came here to just visit a friend. We do not have the warm weather. We've had a lot of snow. They do have legalized poker and gambling. However, it's in a little, like a mountain town called Blackhawk, Colorado. So it's pretty hard to get to. I kind of presume that there's a lot of private games in the city and things like that, probably because of the sheer distance to get to this place. And out here in Blackhawk, it's beautiful. You know, you can fly fish, there's a little bit of golf nearby, you can hike, but it doesn't have the trappings of city life. Don't really know what kind of action I'm gonna be getting into. You know, you're not at a major casino, so you're kind of at the mercy of, of what may or may not run. There is a list for 510. There is some 2-5 no limit going. I'm gonna play whatever I can get into. It's cool to be in a new location. Uh, I don't really think many, if any, vloggers have, have shot this room. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll be first to market on that. I do know if the 510 game runs, it has a $5,000 cap. Now I probably will not buy in for 5,000 unless there's a major, major, major spot sitting 5K deep. I'll probably buy in for like 2K or something like that. That's 200 big blinds. I'm gonna try to get in there, win a little bit of money today. Obviously all the opponents are gonna be unknown and I'll do the best to make my adjustments on the fly. So thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying this content, please, hit that subscribe button, really helps the channel. I will catch up with you guys for a little recap at the end. I decided to leave the sun and the beach for snow in Denver, and we're playing 510 No Limit at Monarch when the hijack raises to $30. We've got two tens in the big blind and make it $120 to go. Hijack calls and we're off to a flop here. We get a 622 rainbow board. So a very good flop for tens. And I go ahead with something on the bigger side here, $150. I think the opponent's gonna have a hard time finding a fold with much of anything he has here. He does put in the call. Turn is a jack of hearts. So hands like ace queen of hearts, ace king of hearts, he can certainly have. He can have many combinations of ace jack that peeled one on the flop, which would be very reasonable. Also hands like nines, eights, sevens. So I go ahead and bet small here, $180. After a good sized deliberation, the hijack does call. And bang, the river is an absolute no doubter for us. We now have tens full of deuces. So again, when I'm trying to think about what types of hands we wanna target here, we're kind of hoping for a crying call from two nines, two eights, something that gets really curious Ace Jack is probably gonna pay off a bet. So when I'm considering what size I wanna use here, I'm trying to think of what best targets the hands that can pay us. And I go for a milk bet. One third pot, $300. And I think this bet is relatively effective in this spot. I am gonna have some bluffs with this size, but I really am trying to target the weaker portions of his value range that can call me. And given the amount of time that the guy tanks here, which is a pretty long while, I think this bet is quite effective. It's doing the job that we wanted it to do. And the hijack wisely gets away from it. He folds. In this next one, the hijack makes it 30 and we get that adrenaline pump in the cutoff with pocket rockets. We make it 100. 100. Small blind puts in the cold call here. All in. And the big blind goes all in for 465. So a really good development. The hijack folds. Can I just see what you're playing? Like a thousand. Yeah. That's cool, that's cool, that's cool. So I see the small blind's got about a thousand dollars and I think given the fact that he's not very deep, I go ahead and just put in the call. Now I'm getting really excited because the small blind's contemplating his options here. 
The small blind goes ahead and folds. And we're going to get a flop here, turn and river. And the board runs out with four clubs and we do not have a club. But the big blind table is ace queen of hearts. So she river top pair and pocket rockets hold. Things are going pretty well so far here in Blackhawk, Colorado. And in this hand, we pick up Live King's absolute favorite hand on the button, Ace King offsuit. Raise. Low Jack raises to 30. And this is the same guy as the pocket tens hand from earlier. This is a slam dunk three butt for us. I make it $110. And maybe there's a little rivalry developing. There isn't much history, but sometimes in these small samples, people think you might be picking on them. But I've just had really good hands against this guy so far. The low jack reaches for raising chips and he raises to $350. And this guy hasn't been very aggressive. So I perceive this as big strength. But I've got my favorite hand and I'm not going anywhere. So I go ahead and put in the call. The flop comes eight, seven, seven, two spades. So we completely whiff, flop absolutely nothing. And again, this guy hasn't been that aggressive. So when he bets $300, I decide to quickly fold here. This next hand is going to feature a familiar foe. Same opponent as last hand. He's in middle position this hand and raises to 30. I go ahead and re-raise $110 with my ace 10 of clubs from hijack. And I think this hand could be played as a call or a raise, but my preference is to err on the aggressive side of things. Calls 110, we're heads up. Middle position calls. And we're heads up to a flop of queen, eight, two, two diamonds and a heart. He checks it over to us. And I go for a small size here, $75. 75. The bluff fails and he calls. Turn is a nine of hearts. So diamonds and hearts out there now, and he checks it over to us. And I think here I would either bet really big or have some checks And this time I do check. River brings in the front door flush, and he checks again. We block a straight here, but I don't think that's really relevant because we would have bet Jack-10 on the turn, certainly. Front door diamonds do come in, and he checks again. And I think this guy's relatively weak here. So I go ahead and bet $215. And looking back on this, I actually do not like my size here. I think it's too small. I'm not really a fan of what some people call a value bet bluff something that looks strong, I'd rather just bet bigger with my bluffs. But in this situation, I did pick a size that I would use with value quite frequently. The opponent is deep in the tank here, live poker. People don't like to fold. What do you think, man? All I do I is a bluff. Over there well, then probably hard to call, but I mean, do what you want. Not, not, not too big of a bet here for this amount of time. I do a little shit talking. I'm slightly annoyed at the amount of time he's taking because he's just taking forever facing this bet. And by the grace of the poker gods, we get the bluff. You got a gaze high or something? No, not bad. I'm better than that. Oh, okay. I thought you were thinking about ace high. I've got ace six of clubs in middle position here and make it 30 to go. The main opponent in this hand is going to be our very good friend in Denver. We're going to call him T unit and he calls low jack. So I think his range is quite strong here when he calls. Small blind and big blind call, and it's four ways to the flop here. We flop top pair and a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight draw. And when they check to me, I quickly check. T unit checks as well. And the turn is a nine of clubs. They both quickly check. And I decide to check once again for deception. And T unit bets $75. Now I think he can have hands like two eights, nine eight suited, 10 nine suited, pocket nines, maybe even a hand like pocket 10. So I go ahead and call kind of laying a trap here a little bit, but we can be beat quite frequently. And the river's a 10, so we do not improve. And I check again. And T-Unit is kind of a little bit of a student of mine. I coach him a little bit. I wouldn't say it's like very formal, but we talk quite a bit. And the student bets 200 into the teacher. And when I look at his range here, I just think he's got a lot of 10-9 suited, pocket nines, and even occasionally pocket tens that have improved on this river. So I go ahead and fold. And he later told me he did in fact have pocket nines for a turn set. In this one, I pick up my absolute favorite hand, ace king offsuit on the button. Cutoff opens to 40. Uh, 40. 135. Raise. And I re-raise $135. Uh, 
With the cutoff chose violence today, he re-raises to $400. And we've got a little late position on late position battle here. But what can I really do? Ace King is just love at first sight for me. So naturally I call. Flop comes 10, 7, 3, rainbow. Cutoff bet's $275, and I like his bet size here. I'm not ready to give up just yet. I go ahead and call. The turn is a 10, so the top card is paired now. And the cutoff's contemplating his options. He's got a little bit over pot behind. All in. And he goes all in for 1550. And no matter how much I love this hand, there's just not much I can do here, and I put it in the muck. The game is shorthanded now, and I decide to induce a little bit of action with a $20 button straddle. And I peel AC Deucey. I've always had an affinity for this hand ever since I learned that gambling game as a kid. Hijack makes it $50, and I just got that itch. I raise it up, make it look like $185. And the Hijack quickly calls. I don't really know anything about this guy. I just started playing with him about 20 minutes ago. We flop first and third pair. He checks it over. And I bet 140 for value here. And he can certainly have a lot of hands like spade draws. Maybe if we're really lucky, he's got my favorite hand like ace king. Maybe ace queen. He puts in the call. And the turn is incredible. So we're full now. He checks, and I want to keep betting here because I think a deuce looks like a really innocuous card that does nothing for anybody. But of course, that's not the case, and I go ahead and bet $350. He can easily have continues here like spade flush draws and good aces. He could even be stubborn with hands like jacks. He goes ahead and calls. The river's a four, so it's a complete blank. He checks it over, and I want to go for value here. 900 and I decide to fire $900, and he beats me into the pot with the call. And he does not seem happy here. He angrily mucks those cards. And we finally win a pretty big pot here today at Monarch. Okay, guys, that's it here from Blackhawk, Colorado. I'm just shooting out here on the streets of Blackhawk because I was getting a weird look from a security guard who saw me shooting out front of the sign out here. So I decided to take a walk to this blank canvas that you see behind me. I will say that the Monarch is really, really nice. The rooms are beautiful. They've got a sick steakhouse. It kind of feels more of like a vacation getaway as opposed to, you know, the kind of casinos that I'm used to playing at or maybe that you guys are used to playing at. It's it's just kind of a different vibe out here in the mountains. The game's played with, uh, you know, mostly without a straddle. So it's kind of a traditional 510 No Limit game. I've been playing a lot of 510 No Limit with a straddle. So this was a little bit different in that regard. You know, the games were fun. The people are really, really nice. Staff at Monarch does a great job. I mean, especially for a small room that's kind of not in a major market, I gotta say that dealer quality is extremely high at the Monarch, and that's really, really nice. You know, when you go into a lot of smaller casinos, sometimes dealer quality can vary. Here, it was really good. I was mostly card dead. I had a bunch of three bet where like somebody would open, I would three bet, they would call, and I would take it down on a flop. I mean, that probably happened to me like five or six times today maybe more the game was kind of stuck in the muck in and out you know and then i i got lucky and, and made that sweet ace deuce full house uh you know it's nice when it happens final numbers we were in for 2000 we were out for 4019 that's a profit of 2019 most of it came in that one hand so very fortunate with that ace deuce pretty good day overall if you like what you see please Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We're really working hard on these vlogs and we appreciate you watching. As I will catch up with you guys next session, next time. Don't know where it's gonna be yet. Thinking it might be Ohio. Gonna go home for a little bit maybe. Thanks again for watching, Life King out.